look at advanced reaction engineering. Today, we look at practice problems. Look at tubular reactors. Okay, this is the exercise for today. We all know that tubular reactors are very, very common in the process industry. Uh, fine examples of that would be sulfur dioxide plus oxygen giving the sulfur trioxide. And then you have nitrogen plus hydrogen giving you ammonia. These are finest examples of exothermic reversible, these are all exothermic reversible and catalytic. They all require catalyst. So, uh, examples that uh, our process industry use extensively. We want to look at some of these uh, to understand some of the intricate details that go into it and some strategies that uh, helps us to understand how to manage these reactions in the process industry. Now, to put it in the context, let us take an example. Let us take an example A going to B, okay. 1, 2, a reversible reaction. Let us say that R B equal to K 1 C A minus of K 2 C B. As an example, this is not to illustrate how things would happen. So, the B C 1 C A 0, 1 minus of x minus of K 2 C A 0 times x of course, assuming that C B 0 equal to 0. It is frequently this would be a case that applies. Okay. Now, if we look carefully at this reaction, we find that this term del R B by del T at constant x. What is del R B by del T at constant x? When you differentiate this one, you will get K 1 E 1 by R T squared C A 0 times 1 minus of x minus K 2 E 2 by R T squared C A 0 times x. Now, it is known that uh, for each x, this the R B goes through a maxima. In other words, uh, if you set it equal to 0, we get an equation which is x m by 1 minus of x m equal to k 1 by k 2, k 1 by k 2. Okay. E 1 by E 2. Okay. What is K 1 by K 2? It is equilibrium constant times E 1 by E 2. So, what we are saying? What we are saying is that, that del R B by del T at constant x goes to 0. This implies x m by 1 minus of x m equal to cap equilibrium constant time E 1 by E 2. Okay. Now, if you look at uh, let us if you look at this reaction, this reaction at equilibrium R B equal to 0. So, at equilibrium R B equal to 0, which means that K 1 C A 1 minus of x minus of K 2 C B C A times x equal to 0 which means that x by 1 minus of x okay, equal to k 1 by k 2 equal to k. Okay. Notice, notice that x m by 1 minus of x m is k times e 1 by e 2 and uh, at equilibrium I will call it uh, this is at equilibrium. Okay. Okay. I should put x e here too. So, x e by 1 minus of x e equal to k. So, the forms are very similar, uh, forms are very similar and we have already shown this. So, there is no need to go through this once again. We have shown that plots for an exothermic reversible reaction for an exothermic reversible reaction. If you make a plot of of T versus x, if you make a plot the equilibrium, this is the equilibrium curve, which means this, this curve is described by this, this equation. Okay. Now, if you make a plot 
of this equation x m by 1 minus x m k e 1 by e 2, this curve will look something like this. Okay, this is the will I call this del r b by del t at constant x equal to 0 or we can call it as locus locus of max rates. Okay. Now, why are we doing this? We are doing this to understand how to conduct this reaction in a tubular reactor. So, that is the. So, essentially what we have done, we have found out the locus of maximum and reaction rates that is appropriate to this reaction. So, clearly if you want to have a good design, you would like to see that our our process runs along this line, so that the size of the equipment would be as small as possible. Okay. Let us say, let us say we have a tubular reactor. Okay. That means, uh, let us look at a tubular reactor. Okay. What is our tubular reactor design equations? Our energy ba material balance, our material balance will look like F A 0 times d x d v equal to r 1 minus of r 2. This is the material balance. Our energy balance will look like this d t d v equal to r 1 minus of r 2 times minus of delta h 1 star which is the heat of reaction plus q minus of w s. We say we do not uh, look for any work from the system and if it is adiabatic if adiabatic. Okay. So, let us look at the moment uh, the situation of a tubular reactor material balance and energy balance under adiabatic uh, situation. That means, we do not allow uh, heat to go out of the system. Okay. Now, if I call this as equation 2 and if I call this as equation 1, if I do 1 divided by 2, we will get uh, V C P D T D V okay, divided by D X D V. So, I will call this as D T D X. Okay. D T D X, so, uh, this is F A 0. Okay. R 1 minus R 2 cancels off. So, we are left with minus of delta H 1 star. So, just set it up once again. So, I am just, uh, I'm just rewriting this equation once again. So, we get V C P. So, this is once again tubular reactor. Okay. We have V times C P D T times D X okay. that is the left hand side and the right hand side has got minus delta H 1 star. Okay. So, it is equal to minus of delta H 1 star. Okay. Now, V the volumetric flow in a, if for a given reaction volumetric flow actually depends on so many factors particularly the temperature and so on. If there is change in moles also volumetric flow will change and so on. For suppose we consider a situation as in this particular case A going to B and B going to A, V equal to V naught. So, that in this case F is 0. Okay. So, that if I uh, put V equal to V naught, this uh, so this becomes V naught C P F A 0 is V naught C A naught D T D X equal to minus of delta H 1 star. Okay or d t d x d t d x equal to cancels off. So, it becomes C A 0 times minus of delta H 1 star divided by C P. Okay. Now, the point of uh, uh, putting it in this form is that what we are trying to say here is that in a tubular reactor variation of temperature with conversion depends is equal to C A 0 which is a constant delta H 1 star by C p, this is typically is not a very strong function of uh, temperature or any other compositions. Similarly, C p the volumetric specific heat we have said it is not a very strong function of what happens during the chemical reaction. So, in other words what we are trying to say is that d t d x d t d x equal to C a 0 which is a constant minus delta H 1 star which does not change very much, C p also does not change very much. Therefore, the right hand side is a constant. Okay. This is the point we are trying to put across. So, right hand side is a constant. Okay. 
you can see. Uh, so, as a result, when you make a plot, you make a plot of x versus t, and you have this equilibrium curve. You have this maxima and rate curve. This is equilibria. Okay, this is locus of max rates. Okay, and if our temperature is t zero, we are starting it here. As per this equation here, we should expect that we will move along a line like this. Or if your t zero is here, then we will move along a line like this, and it will go and touch the equilibrium curve. At this point, the rate reaction rates are zero. Rates equal to zero. At this point, the rates are highest. Okay. So you notice here that as you move along this line, this line is the adiabatic line. As you said, this is the adiabatic line. Okay. Why is it the adiabatic line? We have knocked out. We have knocked out the term Q from our equations because we are um, uh, writing the equations for the case of an adiabatic process. Okay. So, that so as you move along the adiabatic line from this point to this point the reaction rates keeps on increasing here it becomes maximum as it moves from here towards the equilibrium curve the rate keeps on decreasing and it becomes 0 at as it touches the equilibrium curve. Okay. Now, the question that we, I mean, you and I would like to know is in our design what do we do? How do we achieve a design which ensures that the reaction goes to see this is x. So, we, we want to go to as high a level of x as possible that means, we want this to reach to the highest value. Okay. Now, if I say this is uh, in the sense that this is 1, this is 0.99, this point is 0.98 let us say and we want to go to as high a conversion as possible, how do we achieve this? Okay. Now, what, what our equations are telling us, what our equations are telling us is that an adiabatic process temperature and conversion will move along this line, along this line and then it will go and hit the point of equilibria and stop. So, clearly if this, this point the, the conversion corresponding to this point this value of x here let us say is 0.3, then clearly we are not able to reach as high a conversion as you and I would like to reach. Our point in this uh, practice exercise is how do we go to higher and higher levels of reaction, levels of uh, extents of reaction. Okay. That is what we would like to do. Let us see how to achieve this. We achieve this by recognizing the following. So you have equilibrium curve, you have your maximum reaction rate curve, this is equilibria, this is uh, locus max rates okay. and let us say our feed is available at T naught. Now, if feed is available at T naught and if you are going to if you are going to do an adiabatic process you would probably travel along this line and then go and stop there. If instead if we had heated up this T naught and gone up to this point T naught here then once again this line is able to give you the average reaction rates here, the average reaction rates here, these reaction rates, these reaction rates are much larger. Why are they much larger? Because the temperatures are much larger. From T 1 0 to T 2 0, what we have achieved is that we have achieved much higher reaction rates and we are able to move along this curve. Once again we face the same problem that we we have to stop somewhere because the reaction rates from this point it starts decreasing. So, we will start somewhere here and then we will start wondering what is it that we must do. So, what are we trying to say is the following that our tubular reactor equation says that d t d x on the right hand side is a constant and therefore, our uh, the d t d x being a constant it is a straight line and this straight line if you move along from uh, from T 0 if you move along you can keep going along or you can keep going along up to the equilibria and moment you reach equilibria the, the reaction rates are nil at the point of uh, corresponding to this maximum reaction the re rates are the highest. So, as you go from this point to this point rates keep increasing and from this point onwards the rate starts to keep decreasing and when you, you reach the end point the reaction stops. The question is how is it that you and I 
can conduct this process so that we go to the highest level of conversion possible. Now, we notice that if, this, if the feed temperature is low, the reaction rates are low, so that we can preheat it and take it up to T 2 0 as the initial temperature entering the equipment. Then we run an adiabatic reactor, once again we will face the same problem that as it approaches the equilibria the rate becomes very low. So, you have to stop here therefore, how do we go forward from here to much higher level of conversion for which what we decide. So, we run interstage cooling. So, if you can if you can interstage cool this and then and then once again from here we can run one adiabatic reactor once again we can cool interstage okay, and then run another adiabatic reactor we can cool interstage and then run another adiabatic reactor and cool interstage. Okay. In other words what we are trying to say is that interstage cooling interstage cooling inter stage cooling interstage cooling is essential uh, to be able to reach high levels of conversion for reversible reversible exothermic reactions okay so this is the so if you look at sulfur dioxide or if you look at ammonia you will find that this this is a sta reactor sta reactor 1 reactor 2 reactor 3 reactor 4 so this is an instance of a four stage process where we go from zero conversion to a much higher level of conversion okay so this is the exercise that we want to illustrate this is the exercise we want to illustrate and then the numbers are given below so we have a chemical reaction we have an instance uh, the data is given here ca0 is given 1.6 specific heat is given as 1.0 uh, mole, mole per liter and then is calories per kg per c T naught is given as 21 V naught is given as 5 cubic meters per hour okay. density is given as 0.91 grams per ml okay. and, then, and then you have E 1 is given as 25,000 uh, calories per mole Okay. Delta H is given as minus 20,000 calories per mole. Okay. In other words, E 1 is known how is E 2? We know that E 1 and E 2 are related by our understanding of basics. So, that if you have a chemical reaction which is uh, irreversible, so this is this is E 2, this is E 2 okay. and this is E 1. Okay. Okay. and by definition E 1 minus of E 2 equal to delta H. Okay. So, for an exothermic reaction E 2 is greater than E 1 and therefore, delta H is negative. Okay. So, if, if all the data is given below and then the rate constants rate constant K is given as 12 per hour at 21 C. Okay. Equilibrium constant is given as 12.2 at 25 C. So, you can see here rate constants are given, equilibrium constant is given. Therefore, we can plot the, uh, the equilibrium curve. So, we know, so, so we can do the whole exercise quickly so that uh, you know we have a good understanding of how this whole thing is to be done for a multi stage tubular reactor design. Let us quickly run through this for the numbers. So, how do we do this design? We x versus t. So, what is equilibrium curve? We know that it is k by k plus 1. Okay. So, we can calculate the value of k since k value is given at 12.2 at 25, the heat of reaction is given. So, we are using the Van Toff's equation, we can calculate the value of k at various temperatures and using that we can plot this curve. Okay. Then we also recognize that uh, the, the, the locus of maximum reaction rates, locus of maximum and reaction rates is given by this x m by 1 minus of x m equal to k divided k 1 by e 2. So, using this relationship we can plot the maximum reaction rate curve this is x m this is the x m curve this is the x e curve. Then if our feed temperature is given feed temperature is given as 21. So, feed temperature is given as 21, but if you want to really go to very high conversions if you start with this as 21 and if you run a tubular reactor which is our d t d x 
we know that d t d x is given by C A 0 minus of delta H 1 star divided by C P. C P is given, C P is volumetric specific heat man. So, we can we can now run a tubular reactor corresponding to this slope, we can run a tubular reactor like this and we can stop somewhere here, but that does not take us to sufficiently high conversion, then we run a interstage cooling. Then again another tubular reactor we run, then once again we again we run, then again we do this. So, this is how we keep doing this till we achieve the points of our interest. Okay. This is stage 1, stage 2 and stage 3. Okay. So, the, the exercise uh, that we are looking at here is that why what is the rationale for multi stage tubular reactor design? What is the rationale? The rationale is that given a feed temperature and an adiabatic reactor at that feed temperature uh, if you run at best you can reach a conversion which is much lower than what is desired in a process. If you want conversions of 95 percent and so on that the, the process does not allow you to go to such high conversions unless you have multi stage designs. So, the design features that you must take into account is how much inter, inter stage cooling you would like to do between stage. You can cool up to here or you can cool up to here. Each decision implies a certain volume of the interstage cooling device and certain volume of the reaction. Or in other words, in multi stage tubular reactor design, the volume of the reactor or size of the reactor and size of the cooling device are both important. Let us say, for example, you look at ammonia, which is a high pressure process, or sulfur dioxide, which is a low pressure process, but it is gas. So, if this cooling it will be gas to gas cooling would mean a very large heat exchange surface. Okay. So, you have a large heat exchange surface and therefore, a large investment here and, and this is the reactor depending upon the, the cost of the catalyst you will find this tubular reactor would have a certain size. So, we have to take into account the size of the reactor as well as the size of the exchanger both are important from the point of view of design. Okay. This is the point that we must bear in mind when we look at tubular reactor design. Both the size of this equipment and um, which is reaction equipment, this is the heat exchange equipment, we have to look at both to be able to decide what might be appropriate. Okay. So, this is the point I was trying to get across to you and there are several good examples in the, in the literature, shift conversion, steam reformation, ammonia synthesis, sulfur dioxide uh, conversion and so on are fine examples of reactions where the reaction is reversible, exothermic and therefore, and a catalytic and therefore, we need to do a multi stage design to be able to give you an optimum size of the equipment at the same time achieve very high levels of conversion. Having said this, there are some features that we must appreciate. Let me sort of uh, come back to this to illustrate what I want to say. What we, we want to recognize is that suppose we have a tubular reactor, let us say feed coming in going out and because it is exothermic A going to B as an example B going to A. Okay. So, this is exothermic. So, what happens as a result is that as it goes through, as it goes through you will find if you make a plot, if you make a plot of of temperature versus equipment and if uh, if there is wall cooling let us say there is some cooling here so okay coming in and going out you will find the temperature goes through a maximum and comes down or in other words uh, there is a point called the hot spot what is a hot spot hot spot is the, is the position where the temperature of the of the catalyst becomes the highest Generally, uh, the, uh, the reactor designs should take into account the maximum permissible, maximum permissible, permissible hot spot temperature. Now, there are several reasons for this. One could be that the catalyst is uh, not uh, meant to be used at a temperature higher than a certain specific temperature. And secondly, a hot spot could be quite, quite high and, and then the, there could be some bad effects on the material of construction of the uh, equipment itself. So, in, in both the cases we have to have a good idea of 
what the hot spot temperature is and how we can regulate this. Let us try and look at uh, how to understand this by writing our equations once again. So, let me write the tubular reactor once again. We have our material balance which is F A naught times d x d v okay, equal to R 1 minus of R 2. Then we have our energy balance which is d t d v equal to R 1 minus of R 2 in minus of delta H 1 star plus Q minus of W s sorry 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 plus Q minus of W s and Q we have shown it can be replaced by this where it is T c minus of T where H is the heat transfer coefficient and T c is the temperature of the heating medium. Okay. And if it is uh, if it is a cooling medium this uh, T c minus of T would be negative. So, it does not matter. So, if you look at this equation here and I ask you what happens at the hot spot temperature, you will tell me that hot spot temperature this term is 0. In other words, at the hot spot the, the rate at heat generation is balanced by the heat of heat removal and consequently you find that you will see a temperature profile like this. In other words, your tubular reactor temperature rises from T naught here, T naught here, here to various temperatures. Now, it might be useful to us if instead of allowing a temperature variation in the equipment, if we can keep the temperature nearly constant, nearly constant, so that we are able to ensure that hot spot problems, I mean high excessively high temperatures are not uh, encountered. At the same time, we are able to ensure that the reaction occurs uh, at the temperature of our choosing, you know that is just an advantage. The question that I would like to sort of put across to you is that suppose we want to run an exp run our process at a constant temperature. This is a condition that we want to impose on our catalyst for the reasons being that uh, we want to be absolutely sure that our car catalyst is only exposed to temperatures that we specify and nothing more than that we will we are willing to accept. So, if there are situations like this which we want to handle, how do we handle this? So, this is an example I want to illustrate as an example. So, the example that I want to illustrate now is constant temperature operation of a tubular reactor. Okay. So, how do you operate a tubular reactor at constant temperature? How can we do this and what does it uh, what does it tell us? So, tubular reactor uh, uh, catalytic I will say catalytic that is important catalytic tubular reactor. Of course, uh, what is in my mind is uh, reactions such as uh, you know steam reformation, shift conversion, ammonia synthesis, sulfur dioxide you know great variety of reactions in the process industry where you find that the the temperature I mean that the catalyst is essential for the success of the process. So, we have here a reactor okay, into which there is a catalyst okay, and feed comes in and, and there is what is called as a jacket, there is a jacket, okay. this is a jacket and, uh, and through which the cooling fluid goes in and comes out. Now, because of the fact that be, there is a wall cooling, we are seeing this temp, this kind of temperature I have pointed out to you T versus volume and we do not want this. How do we, how do we design and operate the process so that this variation in temperature is not an issue in our process? This is what we want to do. How do we do this? To be able to do this, I just want to set up our equations once again and recall our interest in. So, we have A going to B as our reaction. So, we have this our material balance given by given by this. Okay. All right. And then this I call this R B as some K 1 C A 0 C A 0 1 minus of x. Okay. I will take for the moment a uh, uh, irreversible reaction, we can uh, relax it a little later. Now, let us say activity of the catalyst is alpha. Okay. 
So, this is our reaction is taking place. So, I will put it in the form of so d x d tau equal to k 1 alpha c h 0 times 1 minus of x okay, where alpha is catalyst activity. All right. Now, this is the material balance. Now, how does the energy balance look like? Our energy balance looks like this V C P D T D V equal to K alpha C A 0 1 minus of x minus of delta H 1 star plus Q. I have just uh, I mean now in our energy balance we have written it earlier we have written earlier I have just replaced the reaction rate with the rate function here. Okay. All right. So, this is K 1. Okay. Now, what we said what we said let me say it once again our energy balance I just want to write this once again just to emphasize to emphasize d t d v equal to k 1 alpha c a 0 times 1 minus of x minus of delta h 1 star plus q of course, minus w s we are not uh, going to derive work out of this okay. and then d x d tau d x d tau equal to k 1 alpha c 0 times 1 minus of x. We want to run our process at constant temperature. In other words, we do not want we do not want any variation of temperature in this equipment. We do not want that, which means what? Which means that we want this to be zero. Correct. How do we get the left hand side to be zero? Which means this term k1 alpha c a 0 1 minus of x and this q, let me write this in this form k1 alpha 0 equal to c 1 minus of x times minus of delta h 1 star plus 4 h by d this we have done before I am just writing it once again this. So, this is our uh, say T c is going in coming out okay. this is T 0 and then temperature coming out is T. So, you do not want any variation between T 0 and T and the T 0 is chosen as per our uh, uh, understanding may be 200, 250, 300 whatever is the temperature at which we want the equipment to perform. So, T 0 whatever is the T 0 is the temperature at which it emerges and this temperature there is no change in temperature here only reaction occurs which means what this this temperature the, this K 1 this temperature at which the reaction occurs this is the rate of heat release and the rate of heat being picked up by the cooling uh, device. So, this rate of heat generation must be equal to rate of heat removal and this must be so at every point. The point we are saying is that k 1 0 equal to k 1 temperature at any position alpha at any position C A 0 1 minus of x at any position okay, minus of delta h 1 star plus 4 h by d T c minus of T. This must hold at every point in the equipment. Okay. This relationship must hold at every point in the equipment. How do we do this? This is the point that I am putting across to you because if we can do this the operation of tubular reactors that we will face in process industry constant temperature would have great advantage from the point of view of you know looking after the the, the activity of the catalyst and even running the process you know the, the kind of benefits you will get in having constant temperature is a great advantage. So, we want to see by looking at this equation what is it that you and I can do to ensure that this equality is maintained at every point in the reaction equipment. Let us see how to do this. So, what have we said we want we said we want this left hand side to be 0. Okay. What it means it means this is this is equal to q that means q must be equal to this term okay so let me write which means q equal to equal to k1 alpha c a0 1 minus of x times minus delta h1 star so minus q equal to because q by definition is 4h by d tc minus of t 
So, minus q means t is greater than t c that is all it means. Okay. What is q? Now, we also know we, we also know that q which is heat generation uh, heat removal per unit volume multiplied with the volume of the equipment must be equal to f a 0 minus delta h 1 star times x. Do we agree with this? What we are saying is that the total amount of heat release that heat is taken up by the cooling fluid. The reason is where will this heat go anyway? Whatever is the heat that is released by this process, where can it go? Because it is not increasing the temperature of the fluids, because the fluids are at the temperature at which it is entering. So, what we are saying is that the reactor, whatever is the temperature at which it is entering, it is leaving at that temperature only. Therefore, the only way this heat can escape is into the cooling fluid. So, this is the statement of that energy balance. Q times V, I put a minus sign here. Okay. Q times V equal to F A 0 times delta H 1 star times x. Let us see, understand whether the, see this, this is positive minus delta H 1 star is positive for a exothermic reaction. So, right hand side is positive. What is left hand side for x? Left hand side T is greater than T C for, for, a, for the system where there is cooling. Therefore, this is also positive. So, it is quite consistent. So, what we, what we get out of this is x equal to x equal to q v by f a 0 minus of delta h 1 star with a minus sign or it is also equal to q tau divided by c a 0 times minus delta h 1 star. Is that clear what we are saying? We know from our understanding of the physics of the process that whatever is the heat that is generated by the reaction is taken up by the cooling fluid. Okay. I put a negative sign here because it is first law convention Q is formulated as heat put into the system here heat is removed from the system that is why I put a negative sign. So, it says that the extent of reaction as by this definition is given by Q V by F A 0 delta H or in this form. Okay. Now, we notice here we are going to substitute for x from this equation into this equation. So, I will call this equation as I uh, will put a number just to uh, I will put this as equation I will put this as equation 2 okay. and therefore, this as equation equation 4 this is what I have, have in my notebook. So, you will be you'll bear with me. Okay. So, the, I want to substitute for x from equation 4 into equation 2. That is all I am going to do now. When you do this, you get q equal to k 1 alpha c a 0 1 minus x is what q tau divided by c a 0 times minus of delta h 1 star. Okay. Is this clear? What are we doing? It is minus q sir, minus q. I am substituting for x from 4 into 2. So, minus q equal to k 1 alpha, I have just written exactly what I have written and minus of x since x is got a minus sign, I put a plus. Okay. All right. So, this equation gives us alpha equal to minus of q by k 1 divided by alpha equal to q by k 1 divided by c a 0 within brackets of 1 plus q tau divided by c a 0 times minus of delta h 1 star. Okay. Let me just make small simplification just to make it look a little nice. Okay. So, I will just simplify it slightly. So, alpha equal to q by k 1 with a minus sign the minus sign divided by I will take C A 0 common. So, it becomes C A 0 plus Q tau divided by Q tau delta H 1 star with a minus sign. Have I got it right? And then there will be a minus delta H 1 star in the numerator. Is that correct? Please tell me. Have I got it right? 
I hope I have got it right. See, I have taken common. So, C A 0 cancels off minus delta H 1 star goes up. It is ok. It is fine. It is fine. So, what are we saying now? What we are saying is that what is alpha? Alpha is catalyst activity. Now, what can we do? Which means that we can change the activity of the catalyst by putting active catalyst along with some amount of inert. Or in other words, by mixing the catalyst with some inert, we can actually change the activity of the catalyst that we are going to put inside the reaction equipment. Now, what this equation is saying is that if you want to maintain the temperature of the reactor constant across the reactor, if this temperature has to be constant everywhere, then the catalyst catalyst activity that means the amount of catalyst that you will put here, put here and put here this should be changed and that the program of change is going to be described by this equation. That means, you must change the amount of catalyst that you are going to put into unit volume of the reaction equipment here and here and here and so on. It should be described by this equation. Or in other words, you have to exercise lot of care in filling your reactor with catalyst and if you fill that reactor with catalyst as per this equation, then your reactor will perform at the temperature that you have chosen. Therefore, you have gotten rid of one of the most difficult problems of trying to operate a chemical reactor, because this chemical reactor will run exactly at the temperature at which you have designed. Okay. Now, let us just put it in another slightly different form, for, so that we can appreciate the usefulness of this equation. Okay. Alpha equal to minus of q by k 1 minus of delta h 1 star with a minus sign divided by minus of delta h 1 star times C s 0 plus q we can tau as q divided by v 0. So, I can put a v 0 here, I can put a v 0 here. So, in other words what we are saying is that v 0 times minus of q by k 1 minus of delta h 1 star divided by V 0 minus of delta H 1 star C A 0 plus Q Q V equal to alpha. So, what we are saying now is that if you make a plot of alpha versus V as V increases as V increases alpha decreases please note the Q is negative. Okay. Therefore, as V increases the denominator keeps on decreasing and therefore, you will find that you start here and then therefore, alpha keeps on increasing. Therefore, you are actually putting a higher and higher amount of catalyst at uh, later positions in the equipment and this is because of this program of catalyst uh, uh, laying inside the reactor, you are able to maintain constancy of temperature. So, it is, it is this profile uh, of catalyst loading inside the reaction equipment that ensures that you will get uniform temperature throughout the equipment. Okay. Let us ask one more question. All right, we have done our design for at a given temperature T equal to 220 okay. All right, as C A 0 equal to some value. Now, for some reason or V 0 equal to some value. Now, in a, in a, in a process C A 0 might change, V 0 might change. So, many things may happen in a process. How do we manage to run a process at constant temperature? despite variations in all these kinds of processes. Now, we can understand this and we can also address these things quite easily now by looking at the equations we have written. Let us say, let us take an example to illustrate what I am saying. What we are saying now? We are saying that C A 0 has changed, C A 0 has, has increased or decreased let us say. So, let us say C A 0 has, uh, has changed. That means, if you want to maintain, if you want to maintain that this this the heat release this heat release uh, this must be equal to q how do we how do we ensure this equality how do we ensure this equality this q is given by this quantity 4 4h four by d tc so or in other words we can adjust tc to get our temperature t okay or alternatively if you don't adjust t your temperature will automatically will get reset instead of operating at 220, you might operate at 215 or 225. In both cases, you will still be operating at a constant temperature. 
that is the point that I am trying to put across to you that this design gives you an opportunity to operate your process at a constant temperature, but you do not want to run at a temperature which is more than the temperature that you would prefer or in other words if it if your design is only 220 C and you do not want it to be more than 220 clearly you do not want a higher value a different value of C A 0 if it is going to give you a higher temperature you do not want it in which case you will have to reset your T C so that this does not take place. In other words here is an instance of a design which gives you a lot of control over managing the quality of the catalyst so that the catalyst life is preserved, catalyst performance remains as you have designed and your process control becomes much much easier than what you would anticipate. So, just to cut this long story short what I am trying to say in tubular reactor design is that this approach of trying to maintain constant might be of great value particularly with expensive catalysts that we often encounter in the process industry. Thank you.